On an overnight train from Moscow, we arrive at our third stop along this cross-country journey, the Republic of Tatarstan and its capital, Kazan. We meet our local connections, drop our bags at a hostel, and immediately head out into the countryside for another early morning adventure. Officially made it down to the Blue Lake after a nice bumpy dirt road to get here from Kazan. This is where we'll be diving this morning and it's green with algae in the shallow end and then there's this deep blue, really vibrant blue hole where kids are starting to jump in. There's a little pier that looks out at the lake and this place is beautiful. We're out here in the woods. It's a, a, a vast difference from St. Petersburg and Moscow where we were. This is our first taste of Russian countryside. We're gonna get suited up because we're told that the water is very, very cold. So we're gonna suit it up and jump in the water. Here we go, this is all of our gear set up over here. I'd say, I'd say pretty big. XL? XL, yeah, some would say. Thank you. All right, here we go. We're about to go diving. I'm going to refer to my dive master here for more in-depth information about this. Dive master Mike reporting in. Mike, what do we got here? What's our setup? So we're diving in very cold, fresh water. So we have to wear a lot of neoprene. Seven millimeter neoprene is one of the thickest wetsuits you can get. That means because how neoprene works, there's little air bubbles. We're going to float to the surface very easily. So you've got to wear lead weights to counterbalance that. These are lead weights and they're really heavy. But besides that, we have to wear the tank and all the gear and then walk about 200 meters to the water in black in the sun. It's gonna get hot. It's gonna get hot and then all of a sudden very cold. Yeah. I believe it's four degrees Celsius, about 40 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Yep. So we're gonna gear up and all this stuff as soon as everyone's ready, but you don't wanna do it a minute too soon because it's a lot of weight. Here we go, scuba diving, Russia. Let's go. You ready? Let's go. <laughs> I always forget that part. So, so hot. So hot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't get my sleeves out. I'm stuck. <laughs> oh yeah. Now we need one more. Now I gotta get that one on. Oh yeah. I feel like the kid from Christmas Story. All right, we're on the move. We're going. We're going to the water. This is gonna be great. Can't wait to get in the water. That cold water never sounded so good. Oh. What's up, guys? What's up? Oh. Oh, yeah. We brought our stuff down from the trucks. Here comes Scuba Steve. We're ready to go. This is actually the biggest of three karst lakes in the area, formed as a result of collapsing caves and reaching a depth of 18 meters or 60 feet. The water never freezes, but it's very cold and crystal clear all year round. Woo okay, that was, a, that was a first. <laughs> you gotta see your face. Your face. <laughs> it feels like someone. If <laughs> someone has put me in a hot wax mold and I can't move my mouth. Ooh, Nancy, my feet are cold. Okay, let's make it inside. Alright, and now we're just gonna jump in. I wanna test the water without all the gear on. Let's go try. Without the equipment on. <laughs> Woo! Oh, it's so cold here. Yes. <laughs> no problem. Woo! Oh, okay. Oh, 
Three, two, one. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, okay. oh my god. <laughs> Very cold. Very cold. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Uh, rule number one always wear a wetsuit. We did it. Welcome to Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Russia. <laughs> After an extremely refreshing morning, it's back into Kazan for lunch. And I don't know what it is, but there's something interesting about this city that I connected with right away. It just feels warm and welcoming and more laid back than the first two big cities we visited. All right, after scuba diving, we are in downtown Kazan right now, and we're gonna go try some traditional Tatar food. I have no idea what dishes are or what to expect. I do know that there's no pork because there's a big Muslim uh, community here. There'll be no pork, which is always a little disappointing, but what can you do? And Let's go inside. <laughs> tartar sauce is not from Tatar, I don't think. We're gonna go see. I, I had a feeling that everything was gonna be covered in Tatar sauce. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's for lunch today? We are having a tra Tatar traditional pie. It calls Uchpushmak. It's like triangle, which uh, translates like tr uh, three and triangle, like, you know, it's triangle. What's inside? It's a meat with potato. Tastes like salami. Not spicy, just a fresh, delicious, a little bit fatty salami. Very good. All right, our main course here is lapsha, which is a noodle soup, and then these big pastries. Let's try them. Little cubes of potato with a good amount of meat and some really good seasoning. And then have it with this noodle soup. Hopefully it's not too hot. Oh man, that is a very light, delicious broth with some chives on top, big, big chunks of chicken right there. This is like grandma's, this is like a babushka soup. If you're sick, this is a great, great soup. And these are really meaty and delicious. It's a great team. As I was saying that to him, he's like where the TD would be. What? It's like a tortilla on the outside, like a mix between a crepe and a flour tortilla and just stuffed full with mashed potatoes. It's delicious. And for dessert, we have Yaro Specialty. This is your favorite, right? Yeah. What's the name of this one? Gubaria. Gubaria. I get it? This has rice, raisins, egg, and a crust on top. It looks like some powdered sugar and some crumbly sugar bits. Whoa. You know those crumbly sugar bits you gotta get on the top of apple crisp. It almost, it tastes like that on the top but the powdered sugar is delicious. The raisins, the rice, I believe it's sweetened and the crust of the crunch, the crunch of the crust is just delicious. On the bottom it's a little chewy. Oh man, that is so unique. That's a great lunch. Yeah. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. Gareth. My name is Rima. Nice to meet you. Rima, nice to meet uh -huh. you. Is that no. you. Hello. I'm Gareth. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, first of all, you need to take off your shoes. Okay. In Tatar traditional house. And if all this food wasn't enough, after lunch we stop at the Museum of Chuk Chuk for a second dessert. The home of a merchant is preserved to show visitors what life was like for traditional Tatar people. Traditions, customs, and of course, the secret art of making the perfect chuk chuk, a quintessential Tatar dessert. <laughs> Look at these ones. <laughs> really beautiful chuk chuk in our city. Look at these. All right, we are here. We just got a good lesson, a quick lesson in the art of chuk chuk making, which is a traditional sweet treat here in Tartarstan. And we just got it. It's a big ball of goodness covered with dried fruit, 
covered with nuts. It's made with honey, sugar, flour, sunflower oil, and eggs. Very simple, a little bit of sugar, and you deep fry them, and now they're all broken down into little pieces, and we're gonna try it right now. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. It's like a Rice Krispie treat, but it's made with honey instead of marshmallow. Mmm. Hi, hi, hi! After a little bit of sweets tasting, now we're in to taste some culture. And for that, we're heading in to the Kremlin, which again, like Moscow, is the walled in area that's home to government buildings, that's the religious sites, and it's a beautiful campus. We're here just as the sun is setting. Check out this mosque. Quick info as we pass through, the Kazan Kremlin was built under the command of Ivan the Terrible on the ruins of the former castle of Kazan Khan and it was declared a World Heritage Site in 2000. All right, now we are down on Bauman Street, which is the main strip in downtown Kazan. We got live music happening. It's bumping for a Tuesday night. We got some zebras dressed up, going around taking photos. There's a bunch of street stalls. This is the place to be. It's very cool. <laughs> small tour boat in the city of Kazan. We hopped down for a two and a half hour ride this morning. It's just after 7 a.m. And this is the boat that people take to go out to their summer homes. So you would think it would be a deluxe boat, right? Because, you know, summer homes, people, and I think it'd be all the accommodations of those types of people, but it's very simple. We're sitting on pretty much lawn chairs right now. Let's see what we can get into. Right, we made it. Uh, Mike? I don't know where we are. Don't ask me. Ruben? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. The boys and I took a little bit of a nap, and they could have brought us anywhere. We really have no idea. This could be Chernobyl. This could be Mongolia. This could be, um, I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> When we finally shake the mental cobwebs from a boat ride siesta, Yarrow and our guides explain the significance of this place. <laughs> we have a legend that if you go up, climb all the stairs, then all your sins will be gone. Really? Let's do this. Oh, this is tight. Greetings from the top of our first little tower here on our quest around the old town of Bulgar. This is said to be the original home of the city of Kazan, but then Russian soldiers came in, wrecked the whole thing in the 15th century. They had to move to where the now city of Kazan lies, but there's still ancient ruins and a bunch of different artifacts and also mosques and cathedrals that are still here. So we're touring around. We finally figured out what we're doing here. And the first step was climbing up this little tower to get a view of what looks like just a whole bunch of grassland and a few mosques darted around and a few homes. Now we're gonna go down and keep climbing around. The flourishing ancient city of Bulgar. It was the capital of Volga, Bulgaria, dating all the way back to the eighth century. And it has been moved, sacked, looted, and conquered many times since. 
Persians, pirates, and Mongolians have all passed through here, but perhaps the most significant aspect of this location is the fact that it is the birthplace of the Islam religion here in Russia. And we head into the new white mosque to learn more. This is the biggest Quran in the world. Its weight is 500 kilograms. Cover, uh, you see, is decorated with gold and different stones. Islam was adopted in Tatarstan in 922. You see, this is Tatar Khan, Tatar King. Yes, this lady is his lady, Tatar Queen. And this is Ibn Fadlan, the tra traveler from uh, Baghdad. And they brought Islam here. You see the signs of Islam, this is Quran, and this is the date we believe that Islam was adopted here in our place, in 922. You know what? Nice work. Alright, now we're in the White Mosque, which is a major pilgrimage point for Islamic people here in Russia, in Tartarstan. We're meeting with the Imam, who is the head of all of the Islamic people in this region, and this is a beautiful, beautiful property. Again, religion is a complex thing and I won't get into that, but it's just really interesting to come here and this is why I travel to learn about this type of thing. There's even a hair over there from the Prophet Muhammad. There's prayers right here and a symbol that leads to the Mecca. And there's a lot of really interesting history and information about this religion. Just exploring. It's called All right, and just like that, we are back at the harbor, ready for the boat to go back to Kazan. It was a beautiful day here in the old town of Bolga, very informational, very historical, really cool to see and experience and talk with the Imam. And now it's back to Kazan, and then we go right to the train station because the party doesn't stop. We're just moving right along. Trans-Siberian Challenge, Whew. it is an adventure. And also, side note, you got this kid with a knife that's just been sitting here looking at us. <laughs> Alright, he's a good kid. We're on his good side. Don't use the knife, bud. Alright, and just like that, we are back at the train station. We are on our way to Yakantir... Yak Yakantirinburg. I just said it right, I swear. Yakantirinburg. Yakantirinburg. Yeah, Yakantirinburg? Yeah, we got it. Kazan is much easier to say. It's been a beautiful place, but we're heading out. <laughs> So it is a very old one train, uh, old-fashioned train, very local, and uh, you will experience how it will be at the end of uh, Soviet Union. Very simple and very common second pl class, which was uh, running through all the Soviet Union in former times. Okay. Oh my! And we are, we're here. There is more space here. Oh great! Okay, yeah, so tons of space. Of space. Oh, it's more baggage space. Can you believe that? Okay. Almost too much space in here. Um, the window looks like it might open though. It is extremely hot in here. All right, so we got three, three, three cabins. A little bit different on this one. We're spread out between three cabins here. We got Mike and I in number one. Ruben number two. Yaro number three. This is gonna be fun. So you remember this from your childhood? Yes, in my childhood all trains were the same. And uh, since the last time they become more comfortable and more and more and more comfortable. So just to compare, uh, we're here. Yeah, man, listen. The last one we were in was fancier, there was plugs, it was a bit um, cleaner. This has got character. We're here to, to ride this, the plugs would be nice. This is an older style train, it's about 40 years old, so there isn't any outlets in the train itself. And we're heading out into the wilderness, so we gotta figure out how to charge up to keep this thing on. And we also have a little side bonus. We got a top storage area, we never had that before, so that's a big plus. We're gonna get settled in, and rock and roll. When you first get in, face, my face just, and my face, my face feels funny. We're getting a bathroom tutorial now. So you come in here. So, this you should push that. Oh, okay, you gotta push, okay. And then the, the toilet? Push here. The plug. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is prohibited to use uh, that toilet uh, when a train uh, does not move. 
Okay. So uh, because it goes right down to the right, right down to the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it.